Okay, so here we have a question where we're looking for the uh, angle theta, and I didn't write the interval here, so just let's just write the interval. So let's do it from 0 to 2 pi. So we'll just go around the quadrant once. Let me fix this screen here. Okay, so we're going to do this question exactly the same as we did the others. Uh, we're just going to find the referent uh, related angle in a different way. But other than that, the question is exactly the same. So the first thing that we would do is decide what quadrants the angle could be in. So since it's cosine and it's a positive ratio, then I know it could be in quadrants 1 or 4. So I'm going to draw my diagram. So it could be quadrant one or four. What I don't know, so we have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So this is one, this is four. Um, but when I look at those values, I realize that I can't use the special triangles because there is no special triangle with a hypotenuse of four. And I can't use my graph of cosine because then I would just be estimating where one quarter is. So the third option um, is to use your, your calculator. So we're going to find the related angle using a calculator. So this is sort of my last option. Make sure that it is in radian mode, not degrees. Okay. So just double check on your screen that it's in radians. So if you think of radians, this being pi, so pi would be 3.14 decimal radians, right? And then 2 pi would be 6.28 decimal radians. So we can use special triangles if we want to do our related angle in pi radians. We can use our calculator if we want to find the related angle in decimal radians. So all I need to do on my calculator is use the inverse function of cosine, making sure that I'm in the right mode. So let's do shift cosine of one quarter and I get 1.32. Okay, so that's my related angle in quadrant one, right? So this is 1.3 decimal radians. And that makes sense because if pi is 3.14 radians, pi over 2 is 1.57 radians. So I would expect um, my related angle to be between 0 and 1.57 radians if it's in quadrant 1. Okay, And then it's 1.32 in quadrant 4. So my solution is, remember we always go from 0 to the terminal arm. So in quadrant 1, it's just the 1.32. And then in quadrant 4, I'm coming all the way around here. So it's going to be 2 pi minus 1.32. Okay, so we just subtract 2 pi, or you can use 6.28 if you want. Your calculator will <clears throat> automatically put it in decimals. And then that one would be 4.96. Okay, so sometimes um, you will uh, find it necessary to use your calculator to find the related angle. Uh, everything else stays the same. Nothing else is different. Okay, one thing I want to point out is um, when we have a negative ratio. So my cast rule, my sign value is negative. So... Oh, I wrote my cast rule down wrong. It must be Monday. Let's try that again. Okay, so sine is negative in quadrants three or four. So we'll draw our diagram here. And we have been given the opposite side and the hypotenuse. And we have to find the related angles. So I cannot use the special triangles because I don't have one that matches those values. 
I can't use the graph because I would be guessing, so I'm going to use my calculator. When I type in my related or my fraction, I'm not going to type in the negative. Okay, and the reason I'm not typing in the negative sign is because that I've already taken care of the negative using the cast rule, and so I've determine the quadrant it's going to be. That's all the negative tells me. The negative tells me what quadrant it's going to be in. Has, it's not going to affect the related angle. So I'm going to, and I'll show you the difference in a second once we solve this. So I'm going to do shift sign of just three quarters, not negative three quarters. So it is uh, 0 0.84. So that is this related angle here is 0.84. And this one here is decimal 84. And then I find my solution as I always do. I go from 0 to the terminal arm. So in quadrant 3, it's pi plus 0 0.84 because we're past pi. And in quadrant 4, which is all the way around here, we are not quite at 2 pi. So we'll do 2 pi minus the related angle. So those will be my two solutions. So we'll do pi plus 0 0.84. And that gives us 3.98. And then we'll do 2 pi minus uh, 0 0.84. And that will give us 5.44. Okay, so just to show you, if I did, if I included that negative with my three quarters. So if you tried on your calculator inverse sine of negative three quarters, you will get an answer of negative 0 0.84. And what the calculator is doing is the calculator will give you the closest answer. So the reason it's putting negative 0.84 because negative 0.84 is going in the negative direction 0.84. So what the calculator has done is taken you to the first answer. Um, so it's taken you to the answer that's in quadrant four, and then you would have to figure out the other one. So not the end of the world. You could probably figure it out. But if I were you, I would not include the negative when I do my related angle and just use the cast rule to determine what quadrant it's in. Okay, because sometimes when it gives you, when you have an answer in quadrant two or three, it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to figure out. So just uh, disregard the negative while you're finding the related angle, and let the cast rule take care of that. All right. Um, okay. Some of them. So now we're getting into solving where you might have to isolate the variable. Still done the same way. So I have 2 cos x plus 1 equals 0, and I want to find the value of x if it is in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So in this question, I just have to isolate for x, or for cosine. All right? So I just have to do that extra step. So I just have to get the cosine by itself, and then it becomes just like the other questions. Now I have a cosine ratio, and it's a negative ratio. So it's either in quadrant 2 or 3. So I'll draw my diagram. I have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So I will be able to use pi radians for my related angle because that matches with the pi over 3 diagram. So my related angle is pi over 3. So this angle is pi over 3, and this angle is pi over 3, and then I can just solve the question. So if we go from 0 to quadrant 2, this answer is not quite at pi, so we're going to subtract the related angle from pi. This answer is past pi, so we're going to add the related angle to pi. So my solution set will be 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Okay, so sometimes that extra step is you might have to isolate the variable in order to solve. Um, so again, this one, we have to isolate sine. 
So first thing I would do is move the 3 to the other side. Then I would divide by 4. And then I would need to square root. So keep in mind two things. You can square root the 4, but not the 3. So we'll leave the 3 as a square root, but we could square root 4. And when you square root, you have both positive and negative solutions. So just keep that in mind. When you square root, there's always a positive answer and a negative answer. So what does that mean when I'm solving? Well, what that means is I'm going to have an answer in every single quadrant, all four, because if it's positive root 3 over 2, it would be in 1 and 2. And if it's negative root 3 over 2, it would be in 3 and 4. So I have an answer in all four quadrants. I'm going to have four solutions. So all I need to do is figure out my related angle. I'll just put it in quadrant one for now. So we have the opposite side is root three. The hypotenuse is two. That means it's a pi over three related angle. Okay, so we have an answer in all four quadrants. So in quadrant 1, it'll be pi over 3. In quadrant 2, it'll be 2 pi over 3. In quadrant 3, it'll be 4 pi over 3. And in quadrant 4, it'll be 5 pi over 3. So just be careful with that. Uh, when you are square rooting a sine or cosine function, you are going to get a positive result and a negative result. OK, some of them you're going to have to factor to solve, especially when it's a quadratic. So here, um, I can see when I think of my factoring, I always check for a common factor first. You can do this in one of two ways. So this one, well, let's just take out the common sign. So I see both terms have a sign. So I'm going to take out, factor out sign. And then I will have two roots. So either sine theta equals 0 or sine theta minus 1 equals 0 and sine theta equals 1. So these are my two roots and then I need to solve those roots. So if sine theta equals 0 or sine theta equals 1, I'm not going to find those on a special triangle. But I can, if you remember, our second option is maybe we could draw the graph between 0 and 2 pi and find those values. So 0 sine theta is 0 here, here, and here, and 1 here. So my solution set, when sine theta equals 0, it could be at 0 degrees pi or 2 pi. And if sine theta equals 1, that occurs at pi over 2. doesn't matter the order that you write them. If you want to write them in increasing order, that's fine. Or you can just write them as you solve them. OK. Here we have another quadratic. So this one has to be, oh, I think that's supposed to be, that's a typo. Missing a 1 there. OK, so you can factor this in one of two ways. You can leave it as sine. Um, but sometimes students like to replace the sine with a different letter. So let's say we said sine theta. We're going to represent it by the letter m. So 2 sine squared theta would become 2m squared. Sine theta is m and then minus 1. And sometimes changing that, it looks more familiar for factoring. and so. Sometimes we're more confident factoring it if it um, looks familiar to the regular factoring that we do. Okay, so then we'll just factor it. It's a harder trinomial, but you should be able to do it easily. Whatever method you use, decomposition, crossover, trial and error. Um, 2m squared, I know, has to be 2m times m. It's the only option. 1 has to be 1 times 1. That's my only option. And it has to be plus 1. So it would have to be plus 2 minus 1. And then we're going to solve for m. 
So we'll take each factor, set it equal to m, solve for m. And then remember to put sine back, because if you don't, it's not, tr it's not really the same question. So make sure that if you replace sine with a variable, that you put it back. So either sine theta equals 1 half, or sine theta equals negative 1. Okay, so we have to solve for both those roots. So if sine theta equals 1 half, I'm just going to sketch my cast rule here. It is a positive sine ratio, so it's going to be in quadrant 1 or 2. I have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So my related angle is pi over 6. And I can start my solution set. So in quadrant 1, it would be pi over 6. In quadrant 2, it would be pi minus pi over 6, so 5 pi over 6. And then in my second root, I'm just going to draw the sine curve and look at where sine theta has a value of negative 1, which is right here, which is negative 3, oh, not negative, positive 3 pi over 2. So I get two solutions from the first root, and I get one solution from the second root. Okay, we'll just do one more. Um, so cos squared plus 3 cos plus 2. Again, it's a, it's, a, it's a trinomial that needs to be factored if you want to let cosine equal a different letter. That's fine. So cos squared would become m squared. 3 cosine would become 3m and plus 2. Simple trinomial, easy to factor. Two numbers that multiply to get 2 or 2 and 1, and then they add to get 3. Set my factors equal to 0. Solve for m, and then put the cosine back. Okay, so we have two roots that we need to solve for. Uh, cosine theta equals negative 1. I'm just going to sketch the cosine curve over the interval 0 to 2 pi. And I'm looking at where it equals negative 1, which is right here, which is at pi. Now, cosine theta equals negative 2. That does not match up with any of my special triangles. Because if you think of up adjacent over hypotenuse, I do not have a special triangle that has an adjacent side of 2 and a hypotenuse of 1. If I try to use my calculator, it will say error. So why, why does it say error when I try to find the related angle? So if you think of cosine and the two sides that we are comparing. So in order to find cosine, you have to divide the adjacent side by the hypotenuse. Well, what do we know about the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse, and they'll probably be telling you this since middle school, the hypotenuse always is the longest side. So if you have a ratio where the number on the bottom has to be bigger than the number on the top, or at least equal to. So the number on the top cannot be bigger than the number on the bottom. You will never get a cosine or sine ratio greater than 1 or less than negative 1. It's just not possible. So sine theta and cos theta can never be greater than 1. And when you think of your graph, right, your graph goes up to 1 and down to negative 1, and that's why. Unless you transform it, right, unless you stretch it, your maximum value of cosine is 1 and your minimum is negative 1, and the same with sine. And that's because, and I'll show you with sine as well, 
sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So again, you're dividing by the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is always going to be bigger. So a, if you have a fraction that the number on the bottom is always bigger than the number on the top, you will never get a fraction that's bigger than 1 or less than negative 1. So if you get sine or cosine ratio that's greater than 1 or less than negative 1, it's an invalid solution, right? So the only solution I have is pi from the second root. So you need to write when you get a root that's bigger than 1 or less than negative 1, you need to write invalid, right? So you need to recognize that you know that that's not possible, okay? So sometimes that will happen, um, and you'll just write invalid. Okay, let's just do, what time is it? We'll do one final one. Um, so I'm going to let cosine theta equal m. So this becomes 2m squared plus 3m plus 1. And then we're going to factor whatever method you use to factor. Um, so it has to be 1 and 1. So it'll have to be plus for both. And then we'll solve for m. Isolate. And then put the cosine back. Just remember, make sure you put uh, the proper sine or cosine. Sometimes I have students replace cosine and then put back sine, right? So just be careful that you're putting the right variable back, and then we're solving. Both those roots are valid. So if cosine equals negative one half, uh, it could be in quadrant two or three. We have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So the related angle is pi over 3. Cosine equals negative 1. I'd have to sketch the graph and see where it equals negative 1, which is right here at pi. So my solution set for cosine theta equals negative 1 half would be 2 pi over 3 in quadrant 2 and 4 pi over 3 in quadrant 3. And then for cosine theta equals negative 1, it would equal pi. Okay, so you'll sort of um, progress through solving by just looking at single variables, and then you're going to have some that are uh, requiring factoring.